church planting. There is a quote there by Dr. Vansibola Gejon, and I agree with that quote. The most effective evangelistic methodology for kingdom expansion is church planting. If you have that quote in your manual, you can underline it seven times. The most effective evangelistic methodology for kingdom expansion is church planting. Now, let's relate that with the scripture. The word we call the Great Commission, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 down to 19. Jesus came and said, All powers in heaven and all the earth has been given unto me. Go ye therefore and teach all the nations. So therefore, great commission starts with going. Every church that is a great commission church must go out. We must move out. We must not be sitting in our premises and be claiming the promises. We must move out. We must mobilize people to go and get involved in evangelism, says, go. And that go, he says, you teach. You teach people. Say, teach them. So, say, go ye therefore and teach all the nations. And he said, baptizing them in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That is talking about you incorporate them into Christ. You incorporate them into Christ. They become partakers in the body of Christ. They say, Baptize them in the name of God the Father. Then I say, teach them to observe all things that I have told you. Teach them to, and that's, that's where discipleship takes place. Now, when we go out and we preach to people, we evangelize people, there must be a place where we gather them together for discipleship. So that is where, why church planting is very, very important. Every effort we make at preaching the gospel, every effort we make at evangelizing people without a church, that is a place or a gathering of two, three, four, five people where they can be disciples for the Lord. That effort will be in vain. That's why this church planting of a team is very, very important. Somebody may ask me, what is church planting? Church planting, divination, is a mandate given by the Lord to every believer. In other words, it is not necessarily a duty of a pastor alone. It is, it is just a mandate given to a believer, every believer, to go to the unrich and the unchurch, preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, discipling those people for the Lord or for the kingdom expansion. That is church planting. I quote again, church planting it's a mandate. When we say something is a mandate, it means it is mandatory. It is compulsory. It is something we must never do without. To every believer. So every believer in the church, every member of your church must be involved one way or the other in church planting. And he said they have to go to the unrich and the unchurch. Let me try to explain the unrich. The unrich are people who have never heard the gospel. And they are so common in our communities. Many a times, like I taught in one of our classes in our school, many of the problems we have many a time is that many of our churches don't get involved in researches to know where the unrich are. You may be shocked to know that even in Lagos states that you think it is church saturated. There are so many places in Lagos states where there are no churches. Or let me say, where there are no good churches. Now, I can give you some that you can investigate. If you are moving towards Badagri area, after you are past the place they call Adaloko, after you are past the place they call Era, they are going to meet a river. If you cross to the other side of that particular place, you are going to see a whole lot of communities where there are just very few churches. So, those are many of them. I remember that some group, before churches started being planted in that area, some group of missionary went there to go and preach the gospel to the people and after they preach the gospel to the people they ask them the question is any one of you having question about this jesus that will preach to you and one person in that particular village asked a question he said you told us you told us about jesus christ we used to know he called him name of a man in that place he said, we used to know a particular man is the ashipa in this village he said we used to know another woman she happened to be the 
in child way, yeah, Lodja, or this early Phillies. This Jesus Christ that you are talking about, who is he in Lagos State here? In Lagos State here. In a place in Oyo State, they went there, doing missionary went there to do the work of uh, preaching the gospel. They got to a village where they preached so well about Jesus Christ, and they also asked people any question, and somebody said, we have heard about Coca-Cola. We have heard about Fanta. This Jesus you are talking about, is he a, another brand of soft drink? That tells you that. Then what do we have? You see a lot of people, they gather together in the city center where the churches are. And they are, there. They are just occupying the same block. Four or five churches can be on the same block. Is that the kingdom way of planting the church? No. So you have to go to the own rich. Then we have the own church. Who are the own church? This is my personal definition of the own church. These people, they have heard the gospel, but they have never been discipled for the Lord. So the life of Christianity is not yet in them. And there are many, especially when you go to villages. You have villages, my own village where I came from, until recently, when gospel churches began to go to that village, the churches you will see in our village, they are churches or cultic churches. A church where you go inside and keep people, elders in the church, are occults. They are into occults. Or they are cultists. That's the church. They were there for many years. They have a sense of religion. They have a sense of being connected or being related with Christ. But the problem is that they have never had an encounter with Jesus Christ. So such places also, we must make an effort to go there and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Disciple people, gather them together in a place, disciple them for the Lord. That is church planting. Let me quickly run because of my time. Run foundation for church planting. That is why our, one of our emphasis in this early teaching. Today, one of those things that make people not to see the needed, the needed fruit, the needed profit in terms of church planting is because many of us don't know that there are foundations that can affect the church that we are planting. And Psalm 11 verse 3 says, If the foundation be destroyed, what will the righteous do? If you look at that statement, we are, that is that Psalm, 1, uh, Psalm 11 verse 3, you will see that that foundation is used in a plural form. In other words, it's not one foundation. He said, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? So I'm going to just run in the GV to show you some of the wrong foundations that is affecting many churches that have been planted. Because after you planted a church, you wonder why that church is not growing the way it should grow. It could be your foundation. Let me read just one scripture to establish what I'm about to share with us on wrong foundations that affect the growth of our churches when after we have planted those churches you can turn with me quickly into the book of uh, second king chapter 2 verse 19 and to 22 second kings second kings chapter 2 i will start my reading from verse 19 down to 22 Second Kings chapter 2, verse 19 down to 22. Now the men of the city said to Elisha, Behold, the situation of this city is pleasant as my Lord see, but the water is bad and the land is unfruitful. He said, Bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went to the spring of the water and threw salt in it and said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed this water from now on neither death nor miscarriage shall come from it so the water has been eaten to this day according to the word that elisha spoke now this is a story seven people began to settle down in the city of jericho without finding out the foundations of jericho even though prophet elijah did not i mean elijah did not tell them the details of what happened but by prophetic diagnosis elijah knew what happened Remember that this same Jericho happened to be the Jericho that in the days of Joshua, that Joshua placed a curse. After he defeated the city of Jericho, he said this city that is defeated today, whosoever will start to rebuild this city, we start it with the, the, the first child. We start the foundation with the first child and we complete this city with the last child. 
When you get to First Kings chapter 16, the last verse there, the Bible recorded that there was a man by the name of Yi. This man began to build the city of Jericho and his first child died. Meaning that by the death of that child, the foundation of that city is a bloody foundation. And this man still went ahead and completed the job with the last child adding more blood to it. But some people did not know. They only saw a good land. They only saw a good place and they planted, they started uh, setting down. They planted their city there. But what happened? The city looked good physically, but problem. The fruit land became very unfruitful. The water was bitter, meaning that they were having a lot of disaster because if the water is bitter, it's going to affect their earth. The same thing with the church. Many a times, you just look for a place because of maybe you had somewhere that we need to plant the church. We need to plant the church and you just move out to a particular place without carrying out investigation, without finding out what has gone wrong and what has not gone wrong and you start building the church. And that's why the church is not growing the way it should grow. Now, when it comes to foundations, there are two major kinds of foundations that we need to shake if we are going to plant the church. The number one foundation is what I call personal foundation. There are personal foundation. You that you want to go and plant the church, you need to check your own foundations. If there are things that are wrong about your life, about your ministry, it will translate itself into the church. Then there is number two that I call geographical foundation. And that is talking about the place where you want to plant that church. If that place has a problem, you must do something about it. I remember very well, one of my own church planting efforts, of which I helped a church to do, we, we, because the people that uh, host this very church, we were to plant a branch somewhere, actually I gave them the advice that we need to extend, that we need to extend to a particular community, and then we agreed that we are going to extend. But before, because, before we could know what happened, they said somebody came to call them for a particular place that we can use the place for the church. So, and then they took that, we took that particular place without any research, without any prayers. Then, we started the church. As we started the church, the members of the families of the landlord, the children, they were joining, they were coming to the church. Usually they are last baby. He had a very handsome boy, but imbecile. And the daughters of the landlord, wayward children, they will stand on the main road and men that are passing by, they say, excuse me, free sex. So they didn't find out all this, but we planted the church there. But God revealed something to us that made that church to decide to leave that particular community, that particular uh, place they occupy, and move to another place. What happened? One day, I was ministering in that church. As I was ministering, I had the prompting of the Holy Spirit that we should pray for that boy. That is the landlord's son. So I brought the boy out, very handsome boy, but in Bessa. So I brought the boy out. I said, church, let's pray for this very boy. I have an inspiration from the Lord that we should pray for him, that the power, that is a particular power, using the destiny of this boy, that we need to deliver the boy. So we prayed the prayer. After we prayed, finished praying the prayer, everybody left. It was on Sunday. And the daughter of the general of herself, that church, was even the choir mistress of the church. And at that particular time, she worked in our office. So eventually, the next Monday, we were at the office. I was at the office. The lady called me. He said, Pastor, please come. He said, after we got home, I got, after the prayer we prayed yesterday, and I got to my sled, he said, I had a revelation that I saw an angel that came to me and said, it is the father of that boy that used that boy for money. You know the meaning of that? That simply means the land on which we are using, the place we are using, using as a church is actually bought with blood what? Money. So when she told me that, I quieted her. I said, please don't let anybody hear, you know. We are tenants there. Anybody must not hear this. Keep this information. We are going to pray about it. They forgot to confirm that what that lady saw was true. On the next Sunday, we were at the church I was expecting to see that boy. I didn't see him. So on my own, I took one brother. We went to their, to their house. And for the first time, I met the mother of the boy. Oh, the mother greeted me. Oh, pastor, thank you so much. They told me how much effort you are making on our boy to be okay. Thank you. God bless you. 
And I told her, I said, Mama, you need to join us in that church so that together we can pray for the demons of this boy. And she escorted me to the gate. And she, I looked, she looked up. When she noticed that the, the, the other one has gone in, she said, Daddy, he said, Pastor, I have a secret to tell you. I said, What's the secret? He said, That my boy is my husband that used him for money. The question I put to you is that place that you rented for church, that land that you bought for your church, what was the source of that land? That's why all your prayers, you pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray, you are getting nothing. I want to pray for somebody today that right from henceforth, you will no longer labor in vain. In the mighty name of Jesus. Look at those foundations that are pending down there for us. A foundation of ambition. That's somebody that God did not call to go and start a church. And you go and start. Let me say this to you. Primarily speaking. Primarily speaking. When it comes to ministry operation. There are two kinds of ministers. How many kinds of ministers? How many kinds of ministers? Not philosophy. Scripture. And revelation. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Right from verse 5 there, Apostle Paul was actually settling a kind of dis, uh, division that happened in the Corinthian church. But in an attempt to settle that division that happened, he gave the church one of the most powerful revelations about the oppression of ministry. He said, why are you fighting? You should not fight. Why are you divided? And eventually he went ahead. He said, I, Paul, my own areas of ministry is to plant. Apollo is to what? water and god will do what god will bring the increase what does that simply mean scripturally put there are two kinds of ministers in ministry there are ministers that are called to plants and there are ministers that are called to what water if you are called to water and you go and plant a church that church will never grow it will never grow stay where god has called you can you help me to shout it to somebody say stay where god has called you he said, yeah, you call down the time. Praise the Lord. Number two, a foundation of quarrel and backstab backstabbing. That's an associate this time around. That just one way or the other play on the master and he went to go and start his own church. We have several of such churches today. And that's why they will never grow. A foundation of cheating and cheap stealing. That is so rampant, even among mega churches and big churches. And you go and use that to go and start a church. That church will never grow. A foundation of business venture. That's somebody that went to start the church because he believes that one of the quickest ways to make money is church planting. In fact, we have it today among church leaders and church pastors that will command their associate pastor, go and plant as many churches as you can plant. Because if you can plant more churches, more tithes will come to the equator. A foundation of competition. Okay, if that church is planting 120 churches, we are also going to plant 100 churches. A foundation of sins and immorality. That's a church planter that began planting the church by living in sin. A foundation of ignorance. And that's why I want to beg you today, when my make another call for students to come, please, you need to come. Listen to me. It's a common saying now in church growth, among church growth family. You can start a church without church growth knowledge but if you want to, your church to grow and you want your church to be healthy and you want to get to heaven you need church growth anybody can give back to a child without much knowledge about child upbringing but if you are going to make a, a, a responsible child out of the baby you give back to you need parenting parenting skill so that's where church growth occupy they are you as long as you don't have you are not equipped with church growth knowledge about church planting about church edge about church organization about church administration you will keep making errors i do say this i will always give praise god and thank god all the days of my life that i did not enter into too many forests before god brought me out well, even if you have been to a forest of ministry, you can be brought out. Can you tell your neighbor, say, if you have been in a forest of ministry, you can be brought out. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Then, the foundations of, the foundations of lack of purpose. Somebody started a church, no purpose, no vision. 
the foundations of wrong doctrine and personal revelation, the foundations of no target, you don't have a target to them, the foundation of wrong administration. Why? Because this fellow does not know anything about church administration. The first time I planted a church, I planted church a church before. The first time I planted a church, that was a mistake. I didn't know about church administration. So, actually, we never planned it's going to become a church anyway. What we, I just say, I don't left a church. I said, let me start a fellowship in my parlor. So, we started a fellowship in my parlor. And before you know it, just in the space of less than two months, we have gathered 20 people. So, and because we have gathered 20 people, and we collect offering, we collect offering. So, church administration was has started. Any church, where you gather in one, two, three, four, five, and you begin to collect money, as administration has started. So, and because I wanted to prove that uh, innocent man of God, that I don't touch, I don't touch church money. So I appointed a woman. I said, "You are the treasurer." I appointed another man. I mean, another woman who happened to be a teacher. I said, "You are the financial secretary." I appointed another person. A church of twenty people. We have too many officers. Too many officers. And so. Another blunder that we made that I didn't know, it was actually my wife that first of all discovered that, was the person we appointed as a treasurer happened to be a klepto. I think you know what the meaning of that. A klepto. It's not that she's not a thief, but she's a klepto. She has gift to take what does not belong to her. So, all the money, once we collect the offering, she would eat the money. So, well, my wife that first called call my attention to it and said, this person is eating the money of... I say, ah, woman, a oh, woman. Don't scatter this church. Don't scatter this fellowship. But I discovered one day when my mom visited us and um, at home, she wanted to pay, I remember a tight, 1,000 naira, brand new note, the same, the number follow. So she, she, she gave it to me. She said, this is my tight. I said, no, mommy, we have administration in this church. Pastor, don't collect a uh, tight for member. When you get to fellowship tomorrow, you pay it there. So when we got to fellowship the next day, she paid the money there. And after the service, we are uh, to do some prayer points for the people of God. So I called the treasurer. Do we have any, how much do we make today? Ah, he said, Daddy, I don't know what happened. People did not contribute money much today. We only asked this under than 50 naira. So I said, go and bring the money. The two brand 500 naira notes that my mother paid had what? Had disappeared. Now, what am I saying? Well, that's why if somebody wants to go and start church, what do you know about a church that you are starting church for God's sake? You know nothing. The only thing you know is fasting and prayer. Abby? Because I know somebody I want to tell some of you on the mountain. I'm not saying they told me I was on the mountain where I respected I lay father in the law. He said, What is church goods? Church goods, fasting, prayer, evangelism, church group. I laugh. I laugh. I was on another mountain where he respected Father in the life. I mentioned his name. All of you will know him. He, he said, You want to be a prophet? Stay on the mountain. You want to be a pastor? Go to library. So I, I laugh. This uh, errant ignorance flying everywhere today. And because you don't know, you buy into it. One of the lessons I learned in my life. And that lesson has helped me is that he, an anointed man can be wrong. And if you are not careful because he's anointed, his anointing will cover for his wrongdoings. And you are, you embrace it. So, I want to encourage you. Come and learn. Can you talk to your neighbor? Say, come and learn. You are not talking to your neighbor. Say, come and learn. Another problem foundation is foundation of two main pillars. You know a lot of people, they build the church on two rich people in the church. And when those two people go, the church disappears. Demonic and occultic foundation. When the church planter has gotten involved, he in occultes him and is planting a church. An imbalanced foundation. And the foundation of disobedience to church planting. Let me talk a little bit on this one and I will run down because I can see my time is fast spent. Foundations of disobedience to church planting and geographical location. Listen and listen to me. Apart from prayer, when it comes to church planting, you go say, go and plant a church. Apart from prayer, your next need is sensitivity to the voice of God. You must be sensitive to the voice of God. 
You might be sensitive. Yeah, God said go into the old world. But you have a geographical location in the old world. It doesn't mean anywhere. Somebody said, probably say I should go into the old world. So anywhere I can plant the church. Yes, sir. There are places that are forbidden. So therefore, we must be sensitive and listen to what God is saying. This is a story, true life story. I had from a pastor who came for a ministry actually for counseling. He actually came to see our daddy, the Lord, Dr. Aki John. But what directed to me. And they said he was looking for employment somewhere. And eventually that fellow, when he met a, an elderly man there, who gave him this very cancer. That one told him, he said, go to where God says you go and do the job. He said, I see that you are just running up and down. There is a place where God wants to plant the church. That is where you should go to. Not that you just look for any good name somewhere and say you are planting a church there. So, he now told the, the pastor, the very elderly man now told this very pastor a story of a pastor who began a walk in Edo State um, by Z, by revival. He began a walk in Edo State, and before you know it, people have gathered. And while he was praying, God said, Son, you only, I'm only allowing you to start here. Where you are going to plant the church for me is Portacourt. So go to Portacourt. That is where the are people there that I want you to reach out to. That is where I'm sending you to. And the pastor said, Well, God, I don't know any God. I don't know anybody in Portacourt. You know, we have many of us that can make excuses even to God. He said, Look, I don't know. I, have anyone, I don't have anybody in Portacourt. How can I go to Portacourt? Please, God, let me stay here. And I've discovered this about God. I don't know whether you have also discovered that. When God is giving you an instruction, one, two, three, four, five times, and you are not listening, he will keep quiet. He will keep quiet. Being quiet doesn't mean you approve what you are doing. It means you are your own. So, this guy stayed in Edo State for solid 10 years, but that 30-member church he started never grew beyond 30, and he was suffering. And out of that suffering, he went back to the mountain and went to pray. You have caught it down again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He went to pray. And by prayers, and by the time he prays, the Lord told him, he said, do I say you should go to? Go to Edo State. That's how you judge. I mean, put a course right to do. Go to water courts. And eventually, the guy packed his load and was trying to go to Pata Court. You know, as he was trying to go to Pata Court, he remember a friend of his, they went to the same school together, has actually relocated to Pata Court many years ago. So he searched for the number of that one, went to call that one, and by the time he called the fellow, the fellow picked the phone and said, Hey, what? He said, oh, It's your friend, this and that, this and that. And as we were still talking, he had never told him that he is coming to Potter Court. As we were still talking, he just said, You know, you know, I've been having a dream. That's the man in Potter Court. That God will appear to me and said, A missionary is coming to Potter Court. That I should take care of that missionary. That was when the man shouted, Nami, Nami be the missionary. He said, Please come. And the man went and he got to Potter Court. The man has a self contained house. And uh, the man said, God, I've been revealing the fissure to him. Almost 10 years ago, we see that God said, God, somebody is coming. I will take care of him. He said, not me. And he narrated the story of all the failures he had met at uh, Edo State. After all the narration, they began a fellowship in the house. He said, okay, the first thing is to do a crusade outside. So he mounted a crusade stage outside and sent some little flyer outside for people to come. Unfortunately for him, only four adults were there, but many children. Because they did a film show. But he did about three days crusade. And when we were running up, he said, You want to join this church or this fellowship? He gave the address of that man's house. That that's where we are going to be meeting. Fortunately for him, also on Sunday, four adults that attended came. But the children, none of them came. Because those children, they followed their parents to their different churches. And so they had a fellowship. After the fellowship, one of those people that attended said, Sir, I have a question. So what's your question? He said, is this the place you are going to be using for... Hey, the man now told him the, the, the story of how God called him in Edo State. He said, because over the night, Jesus appeared to me and said, I should give you two plots of land at the back of my house. The other man said, hey, Jesus now appeared to me, but I'm a, building, I, I'm a building engineer. If you can get anybody that will supply you building materials, I will be building and I will not charge. That was when the fourth, the fourth man said, ah, that's what I said. I said building material. I can't give you the whole, but little by little, I will be 
supplying. And the fourth man said, me, I don't build. I do, I'm not a building engineer. But one thing is this. I work with the radio station. Anything that has to do with publication of this ministry, I will do it free. He said, as out of the time he was telling that pastor, that church was a 10,000 member church in Port Harcourt. You know what? That man failed for 10 years because he disobeyed the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord that come to you today. And you know what, what the voice is saying? Come and learn how to do it. That's the voice. Say to your neighbor, say, come and learn how to do it. Say very well, say, come and learn how to do it. One of the people graduating today, who happened to be the governor, is sitting there that is, is seeing me now. He's, one of, he's the governor of the assets. And by his grace, he's a bishop. He's one of the people graduating today. He told me this morning, when he sat down there with the wife, so he said he was just discussing with the wife, that he remembered that the first time he came to our conference, I was the first person that came to receive him. And that was just about three, two and a half years ago. Today, he has PhD in uh, church growth. So maybe the step you are going to take today is a step of two years and two and a half years. You also be accorded not your PhD by certificate alone, but a satisfied PhD. When I say a satisfied PhD, I do tell people, hello, hello. I do tell people, I say, we have some of us, we are not just teaching church growth. We practice it and we see that it works. We practice it and we see that what? It works. My people in the house, does it work? So, all of us are going to stand up. You know you are here this morning. Your church is struggling. Don't think about the money. In Yoruba, they say, I wrote you a work is shaking you. Can you share sure? If you want to consider the cost, you are not going to be beautified. So, you are here this very morning. You know you have never been to church go school. I'm not saying Bible school. I know you have been to Bible school. I was a product of not one, not two Bible school by the grace of God before I encountered church goats. So, it's not talking about Bible school. This one is different from Bible. I'm talking about practical way to do the work of ministry and make the ministry to do what? To prosper in your ends. Not just add knowledge. Though the glory of God, I'm also a theologian by the disease. Some of my colleagues who are just ordinary theologians, when we meet at the feet, we know who is who. So, I want to beg you in the name of the Lord. I want to want our Father to pray for you. You are here this morning. You want to come to church grace to starting by the grace of God on Monday. Our fathers are here to pray for you. The grace to start and finish will be released upon you and you will succeed in it in Jesus' name. Raise your hands up to the heaven. Want to pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. Those of you that raise your hands up, you know you want to be our student. Men and women, come. Don't say I don't understand English. Come. In our school, we make it so simple for you to hear. So you are raising up your hand. You want to be the student of International Center for Child Renewal. Come to the front. We want to pray for you. Come to the front quickly. We want to pray for you. Come out. Come out. If you raise up your hands, you want to be the student. Come out quickly. Are they coming? Please come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Can you clap for those people that are coming? Please, God bless you. Come out. Men and women. Men and women. God bless you, Baba. God bless you. Age is not a limitation. Our daddy who gave us a message before now on stress happened to be a product of that same school. There are many of our father and the Lord who have been product of that school. So please come quickly. At the back there, if you are coming, please do it very fast. Do it very fast. Do it very fast. Do it very fast. And you are going to see the grace to start and to complete it shall be imparted unto you. I'm going to call on the register of our institute to pray for these people. Our dad in the Lord, wherever you are, please come, sir. Come and be the one that pray for these people. God bless you, Baba. Please come and pray for all the students, new students. And if you are still joining, just, just just come 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 just come if you are joining the time the time the chance is still there for you the chance is still there for you god bless you god bless you god bless you god bless you mama god bless all of you that are coming all of you that are young people that are there please come it's also for young people in fact dr agijo normally emphasize that child growth is more for young people than elderly people because you still have more energy you still have more grace to do the job. 
Come quickly, God bless you. Our sister is going to pray for you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we appreciate you because you are our God. You have told us from the beginning that whatsoever that we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be given unto us. I believe that these people, they came out by faith. Lord, I pray for them this morning that their faith will never disappoint them in the name of Jesus. Whatever hindrances that your enemies or the enemies of your ministry, we want to create so that you will not continue in this thing that you have came out for. Lord, I pray that such enemy will be destroyed in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. And as you are going to be coming, every discouragement, I bind them in your life in the name of Jesus. It shall be well with you. I say it shall be well with you. The head and the money to start this school and to finish it, Lord, the Lord will give them unto you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray.